Hello dear students, mining engineers, and geologists, and anyone actually interested in the mining industry. I'm happy to welcome you to this new training in which we are going to be taking take a look at the uh, block modeling and resource estimations, uh, at least the basics of these two topics. And we are going to be using one of the top softwares in the mining industry and if I'm not mistaken correct me if I'm if I'm wrong this is the ma most expensive software uh, package in the mining industry and I don't think that it is expensive for no reason so there's a reason for that okay I've been using the software uh, lately and I was really amazed by uh, how many features there are uh, and the possibilities that uh, are available e in this uh, you know package so uh, in this course we are going to be taking a look at the basics of block modeling and then we are going to use that block model to do some basic you know resource estimation so in the first video like any other videos uh, that you've noticed in our courses we are going to be creating a new project and importing the drill holes or what we call in the mining uh, the geological database so let's go and do that together so this is what you get when you open the software okay it looks a little bit complicated but don't worry we are going to go slowly slowly so the first thing is you need to do is to click on this browse for data folder and you can see that I've created uh, a data folder in which we have all the data that we need and a volcano folder in which you can store all the you know native formats and native files that the software generates or you can put them all together in just one uh, folder but I like to be organi organized because I'm gonna be creating a lot of files so let's select that folder and then what we do is you click on the icon map tech icon in here and choose volcano and now you can see that we have the project set up here if you already have a project file you're going to be listed in here and you can select that and click on uh, finish or next in here but we are going to be creating a new one so let's go and create a new volcano project file and click on next now this is the uh, the project detail and this is the start file name uh, let's call this uh, demo and the uh, project uh, prefix so any database or anything will have this uh, prefix so let's call this DM for example and let's go and click next and now you can see that we have the uh, project coordinate extent so let's take a look at how to get these so you can see here inside the data I have what I call an extent in here so I have the extents I have the uh, let's go and make this a little bit bigger so you can see that I have a color file in here so the, what is a color file if not familiar with this so when you are going to create a geological database inside any mining package you will need these files so you need a color file in which you will have the X, Y, Z, and the depth, and also, of course, it depends on the software. Some of these information could be included in the survey or some other software packages. You can import all of these inside one single uh, file, but most of them, uh, you know, need these kind of files. So we have the color table, and we have the uh, geology table, in which we have all the different intervals or uh, geology intercepted by these drill holes and we have the assay table in which you have all the geochemical you know measurements and uh, stuff like that related to the ore that you are interested in and we have the survey table in which we have all the information related to drill hole like there's a deviation for example if there's a dip for these drill holes and stuff like that I believe if you are taking this course uh, you're actually familiar with these tables you're a geologist or a mining engineer mining engineer and these things are actually considered as uh, like the ba basics of uh, mining engineering so 
these are, are the tables and now we're taking a look at this uh, table in which we have the uh, geological uh, I mean the color table so we have the X Y and Z and the depth and we don't care about the the path here if it's linear or there's a deviation so what I've done is I've created call this uh, min and we have here max sorry max and what I do here is I create X Y and Z so then what I do is I do equal to min so uh, sorry so go to min so this is the minimum of all of these value give me the minimum of all of these values and I get that and then I do the same for X and Z and then I go to here and type in max and I want you to give me the maximum value of all of these okay you can see that we have these two values in here that uh, 300 th 330,326 and you can see that we have the same 300 in here so what we can do maybe we can add one here so uh, we make this so the extent make a little bit larger than the minimum and the maximum so we can use numbers like 330 and three zeros that's below this number and we go a little bit more than the maximum which is 330 let's make it one and then three zeros three zeros am I right yeah so we do this and this is actually the X extent we do the same thing for the uh, Y and Z I believe that the Z I've used 0 and 200 so and I got these so I've calculated the minimum and the maximum and I've got the project extent which are these things that I'm gonna be using so let's go and copy the X and paste it in the easting and go to here and copy the maximum and put down the maximum in here let's go to the Y copy this and paste it here and go to the maximum and paste it here I believe that this is 0 which is the elevation and 200 so we're done with that and we click on finish and wait just uh, a moment and you can see that we have now this interface that we can use so and this window actually pops up which is a design file so what is a design file this is actually some sort of a database that uh, Vulkan actually creates and every vector file or anything that we digitize is going to be stored in this database this is how the software works and make things organized and uh, really structured so let's call this design DB because we're going to be creating a lot of files a lot of specification files and a lot of you know databases so so we're not going to be you know confused so this is actually the design database and it's called design DB okay let's click on OK and what we will notice here that inside design database we actually now have this design database and remember that prefix that we've uh, chosen which is the DM it, that's the prefix that we're gonna find uh, before any file that we create DM design database okay so we've created the design database and now let's go and import these table like I've mentioned they are actually tables so we go to file and then we are going to import something so let's go and click in import and you can see like uh, data mine if you've seen that uh, YouTube video that we've shared in our YouTube channel you can go and check it out type in mining geologist in YouTube and uh, I believe that it's gonna be the first channel it's with the same logo here so uh, that's uh, you can see that we can import uh, data mine files block models and designs and databases and you can see that we import S3 which is from ArcGIS, QGIS and GS softwares and we have Geosoft and we have uh, KM, KML and KMZ from you know Google Earth, MineSight, MineX, Serpac, Whittle, Micromine, My, you know all of these software so what, what we are going to import right now is AutoCAD also uh, is actually database CSV databases so let's go and create databases and click on OK so we are actually creating the geological database now 
this is actually what we call specification file. So what is a specification file? Is C, or whenever you are going to create something new or import something, you will notice that you're going to be filling a lot of uh, forms in here. And what does the specification file do is that stores all the values that you've inserted in here. So whenever you, like let's say that you close the software and you want to you know, fill in the same data that you've used, all you have to do is to import that specification file and all the forms are going to be filled the same exact way. So let's go and call this drill hole, for example, drill hole and add specs, which means specification. And so uh, I like to add, you know, uh, the type of the file so that I don't get things wrong. So let's go now and create uh, a drill hole database. Let's call this uh, maybe drill database and let's add that extension which is .dhd this is really important and let's go to the input files now we need to browse and go to data and select the folder and you can see that all of these uh, you know uh, tables will appear let's select all of them and click on this one to add all of them at once to the uh, software and you can see that we have all of the tables in here and we need to specify what is the header table the header table is actually the table that contains all the coordinates of these drill holes so we need to select that which is actually the color table let's select the color table and let's go to here and you can see that we have all of the different tables actually imported in here the software is going to recognize the types of each field and assign a, a column name for that so we don't have to worry about this unless you want to change this to something else like for example the dip you can say, change that to inclination or whatever you want and you can import that as that I mean that way and we're happy with that let's go and click on OK now when you click on OK you have the synonym assignment so these are actually the tables but in order for the software to recognize which table is which, you need to tell the software which column is which. So in our case, this is a drilling type, okay? And we are going to choose tangent for these kind of, you know, drillings. Now we have these color, color assay geology survey tables. Now, we need to tell the software that this color table is actually the table that contains the whole ID and the location. Okay, now if we specify that, we're able to assign synonyms. So the whole ID is actually the whole ID. The Y here is actually the northing. And the X is actually the easting. The Z is actually the elevation. And the depth is actually the total depth. For the whole path, we don't have it, so let's just type that in. Whole, whole path. But we're not going to use that. In the assay table, we need to tell the software that this is the assay table the from is uh, doesn't exist so let's type that in from and the two is actually the bottom of uh, the geology intercepted the NE is actually the first assay data that we're interested in the FE is actually the second one in the geology table we tell the software that's a geological table the from is actually the top depth and the two is actually the bottom depth and the material is the rock type and this one we can call it zone for example whether it is an ore or a waste so we go to survey now the depth is we need to tell the software that this is actually the survey table we will be able to assign these synonyms here so the depth is actually actually the intercepted depth the dip is actually the inclination and the azimuth is actually the uh, bearing. Okay, now we're done. Let's click on OK. And you can see that all of them that are, uh, that are imported, we don't need to import anything. Now, let's cancel this. Now, in order to view these tables, I mean these drill holes, with, you know, some color coding and with some legend, we need to create a legend for the software. So, in order to do that, we need to go to Analyze and Legend Editor. So, we are going to create a legend for drill holes. Okay. 
So like I've mentioned, we are creating a legend for drill host. So you can see all the different legend in here. It's not block model, it's not contour, it's actually drill. Let's double click to generate a file and we are going to be creating three legends. Or maybe let's stick around for uh, only two. So the first one is here. So let's go and rename this and call this maybe geology. So this is going to be a legend based on the geology. Okay. So the column in geology that contains all the different material, we know that we don't have numeric data. We have actually names, let's say that this is limestone, this is sands, this stuff like that. So it's going to be, uh, you know, string data or uh, alpha data. That's what we call alpha data. So we change this from numeric. So we're not having numbers. We're having, uh, you know, text, so alpha. And then we are going to use this database. It's actually the database that we've created, the drill hole database. And now when we select that database, we're able to see all the tables in here. So the table is going to be the geology table. Inside that geology table, what is the field that we're going to use it and assign colors to it? It's actually the material. Now the to field is actually to, and we have actually a from field, which is actually from. Now, when we do this, we are able, so if we have numeric data, we're able to create some ranges in here, but we don't have them. So let's build color ranges based on the unique values that are actually in the material field. Let's build color ranges. You can see these all the different materials that we have and we can go and assign one color for each one of these one by one or what we can do is to right click on the color and choose color range. Now in the color range you can see we can select the start and the end of the range. So let's pick this one and let's go and pick this one and click on shift hold it and click on the this color for example and then click OK. You can see that we can assign different colors at once by just two clicks and now we need to save this. So this, this is actually going to be the first legend which is based on the geology. Let's go and create a new legend but this time it's going to be numeric and based on the assay uh, data. So let's go and double click this and uh, right click on here and create rename and we're going to call this assay, but this time it's going to be based on the NE, which is the nickel in our case. So this time it's uh, numeric, and we are going to use the same database. And the record table this time is not the geology, it's the assay table, and we are interested in the NE here. Okay, now let's go and you can see that we can use the data range here. So let's go and get the range. Uh, the software is going to calculate the minimum and the maximum, which is the minimum is 0 0.01. Sometimes you will have negative data. So for that, you can check this box here and ignore these numbers. If they are, for example, minus 99, sometimes when the mining company uh, didn't do any analysis in that specific interval, they use the number minus 99. So you can specify that here. But in our case, we don't have this, so we are going to ignore this. This is the interval, so uh, let's say 0 0.5. So for every 0 0.5, I want you to assign a new color. That's what we're going to do. And we're happy with that. Let's go and build ranges. Now we are going to do the exact same thing and assign these colors by just checking these two. And we have all of these colors. So if it's low value, we have a blue color. And if it's really high grade, we're talking about a red color in here. Okay, so we are going to uh, actually uh, save this. And we can do the same thing really quickly and create uh, another one. We are going to call this a say, but this time it's going to be based on the FE values. And it's numeric. We are going to choose a say. The field name is the FE. The two is actually two. We have a uh, from here and uh, okay get the ranges sorry we didn't specify the database so let's go and specify the database here and let's do that again say and field name is actually uh, FE and the from is actually the from and let's get the ranges and you can see that we have from 1 to 52 so let's go everything uh, give me uh, a new color and let's build the color ranges 
and do the exact same thing. Let's go to here, select this one, and select this one, and click on OK. And we're happy with that. Let's go and save this and close it. And now let's view these drill holes. We go to Geology, Drillings, Load Drill Holes. Okay. And then we need to specify that uh, drill hole database, which is this one. And you click on OK. Now let's go and make the uh, thickness of the lines a little bit big so we can see it. And let's make this, I like to view it when it's white, the color, color and click on OK. And these are actually our drill holes and in order to rotate this you can click on this one here and you can pick that place there and now you can go and rotate them and you can see that they have, they have some sort of a legend based on the geology. But you can change this to be based on the assay data so let's go and do that let's go to geology drillings remove drill holes yes let's go to geology drillings and low drill holes but this time we want the uh, actually was displayed based on this we can display it based on the geology for example and click on OK and you can see now it is based on the geology now, let's say if we are sticking here, you can go and click on this uh, to zoom to extend and this one to view from the top view. And as always, you can go and select this one again uh, there and you can rotate it and zoom in using the mouse wheel. This is actually the first video and we are going to be taking a look at more advanced stuff and how to do block modeling and resource estimation in the next videos.